Shalom. I want to give all praise and glory unto Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahushai, Ba'ashem, ha Rilka Kodash. Double honors goes out to the elder apostles, a great millstone, for teaching us this truth. And I also want to acknowledge all the Akyam who are pushing this truth in Babylon with sincerity. All right, so today, uh, and this has been on my spirit to go into this a little bit, um, the Song of Solomon. Um, because the way we're supposed to uh, hearken to this truth and desire this truth and, um, you know, have a passion for this truth is the is likened unto a woman, all right? So what I mean by that is, you know, you should seek this truth uh, and treat it as if you were courting a beautiful woman, you know, that you desired. So that's that's a good sign uh, if if you you know you're wondering if you have the right passion, the right fire. Like, do you desire this woman the same way you would desire a beautiful woman? All right. And if the answer is no, then you're not on fire, man. And you're not, you're probably not a prophet. But the men of the truth, we, we literally, this is our woman, man. This wisdom. So the, the Song of Solomon is, uh, is literally likened the wisdom unto a woman. All right. It's a parable, a metaphor. So <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and read uh, the first verse. It says, the song of songs, which is Solomon's. All right. And, and this has to do with wisdom, right? Because we know Solomon was the, the wisest man to ever walk the earth. Let me get a precept real quick. This is 1 Kings 4 and 32. And it says... Dealing with Solomon, and he spake three thousand proverbs, and his songs were a thousand and five. All right, so in other words, you know, Solomon, King Solomon, had great, great knowledge and wisdom. And why was that? Because he prayed for it, and Yahweh granted him that, because his prayer was not a prayer that he desired. The death of his enemies. He didn't desire material things. No, but Yahweh was pleased with his prayer for wisdom. All right. So let me get into. Uh, that's how we should be, man. We should be praying for the understanding of this truth, not praying for a big house or a fast car or you know the material things. Why? Because those are temporary. And those are all going to melt with fervent heat. But this truth and this understanding is going to stand forever. You see the difference? All right, let me read verse 2. Let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth, for thy love is better than wine. And that word wine is dealing with doctrines, all right? So there's two parables and metaphors uh, in this uh, truth. For uh, the doctrines would be wine and women. All right. Verse 3. Because the, of the savor of thy good ointments, thy name is as ointment poured forth. Therefore do the virgins love thee. All right. And the virgins are likened unto, unto the prophets. Okay. And, that's, and we're considered virgins because... We were, even though we were exposed to different religions, Catholicism, Christianity, you know, we didn't, we, we didn't let those, um, those false doctrines penetrate our soul, all right? So we're likened unto a virgin. So, you know, when we, when we came into the truth or when the truth, you know, was put in front of us, hey, we desired the truth and it moved us. And, and now we desire it just the same way we would desire a beautiful woman. All right. So it says, let me read that again. Because of the savor of thy good ointments, thy name is as ointment poured forth. Therefore do the virgins love thee. So the prophets are the virgins. All right. 
and we love the ointment, which deals with, uh, you know, holiness. The name is holy, and the ointment poured forth on us, you know, it becomes holy. You know, we become holy as we learn this truth. Verse 4. Draw me, we will run after thee. The king hath brought me into his chambers. We will be glad and rejoice in thee. We will remember thy love more than wine. The upright love thee. So who are the upright? The only upright on this planet earth are the prophets, the men who learn this truth. And you have one third that will listen. But this always st starts out with the elect, which are the prophets, the 144,000. And it says, draw me, right? And to the word, when that phrase, draw me, it means to be drawn out. Like just as Moses, when, uh, when the uh, princess of Egypt found Moses in the basket, she drew him out, meaning she pulled him out of the river. Well, in the same way, this, that's why it says, draw me. We will run after thee. The king hath brought me into his chambers. We will be glad and rejoice in thee. We will remember thy love more than wine. The upright love thee. All right, so we've been, the prophets, the men of this truth, we've been drawn out of this wicked society. And it's because Yahweh has chosen certain men to give them understanding and to give them a passion and a desire for this truth. All right. You can't you can't be part of that if you're if you're in a false doctrine, you know, if you're not a virgin. Right? If you are if you're a Christian and that's what you preach, then you're not a virgin. Because we know Christianity is not the truth. You know, over and over we can prove with these verses, with this book, that Christianity is not in line with the actual truth. Starting out with the the one that they portray as their Messiah, the so-called white Messiah, Jesus Christ, right? That's not truth. So then you are not a virgin because you actually hearken to those whores. You're a whore to this truth.